Hey ladies, it's Jacqueline here and I am here to bring you this bonus episode. We're going to talk about self-confidence. I am pumped. I am on fire. I just got off a coaching call with one of my clients and it was such a blessing to just speak about this topic. And I'm trying to remember if I even covered it before. I might have, I might have mentioned it, but we dove in with this session of my co- with my coaching client she wanted to talk about self-confidence and her question was really, how do I have more self-confidence? And so if you are pondering this question, if you want to know exactly how to have self-confidence, then this is the episode for you. As a Christian female in the fitness industry, I've seen so many women frustrated as they search for transformation through diets and exercise alone. And what I realized is that God's word, the most important part of this life for a Christian, seems to be the portion that's always missing from what we're being taught about being fit and healthy. Courageous Fit Female is a podcast for women who love Jesus and want to get fit and healthy His way. Want to seek His truth versus what the world says? Then let's get into today's show. Okay, ladies, so I kind of made this a teaser intro because I'm really not going to share with you how to have (laughs) self-confidence. And the reason why is because what does that word start with? That word starts with self and it points back to us. It points back to ourselves. And there's in a nutshell, I'm just going to get straight to the point and cut to it because there's really no way around it. There's no way to try to to contort it or to wrap it up nicely and say, hey, this is how to have self-confidence. Because for me, the conviction that I have through the Holy Spirit is really, why am I seeking to have self-confidence? It's to shine a light on me, right? That's why it's called self-confidence. And really in this episode, I want to share with you like all the different ways that what matters to God really, what matters to Him Not what matters to the world, not what matters to me, not what matters to what some author said in a book that I read. No, what matters to God? He is our Heavenly Father and He cares about how we walk on this earth. And yes, we have choices and yes, we have influences, but let our influence be Jesus Christ alone. And, you know, I totally get it. I walk in this world. I'm in this life. You know, Jesus says we are in this world, but to not be of this world. We find ourselves being a part of this world and really living in it, even though we know that it goes against the grain. It goes against what scripture says. And we see it in scripture, right? Romans 12, 2 in the NLT version, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So we know that God's word tells us, do not conform to the world. But when we start to veer off and wander away from God, we get sucked into this quote unquote vacuum and it sucks us into the world and it makes us walk in the path of what the world says is logical and what the world says is good and what the world promises us to be happy and to provide fulfillment. But is that really true? Think about that, ladies. Is having self-confidence, quote unquote, self-confidence. And I, I, I put that in quotation marks because I, I was telling my client, I'm like, I took that off of my list. I, it's, it's on my blacklist right now because I don't want the light to shine on me. I've lived that way for my entire life. And every now and then I will try to make the light shine on me, but I don't want that. And so I'm here to share this message with you because if you are battling with this self-confidence, I want to have more confidence and, you know, I want that. My question for you is why do you seek self-confidence? And that was the exact question that I asked my client. I said, why are you seeking self-confidence? What is the reason you are seeking it? And I started telling her that it starts with the word self and she already I didn't even have to say anything else. She she was pointing her finger up in the air and she's like, ah, I get it. But the problem is that when we lean on the world's wisdom and we lean and walk towards and be on the path that the world is on, that's where we tend to believe lies. Satan has provided this path for us to walk on and it doesn't glorify God. So, 
for you, the question that I want you to challenge yourself with is to take out a notebook and write down this question or op to open up your notes on your phone and write the question out. Why do I seek self-confidence? The next question is, I have three questions. The next question is, can you write down one way God approves of your self-confidence? Okay, meditate on God's word as you actually write the answers and your responses to these. And number three, I want you to write down, what are some ways I can overestimate myself when I have self-confidence? And I'll write all of the questions down. I'll leave it down in the show notes here on iTunes. And um, then you can... If you're driving or whatever, you can go down and just get the questions and work on them and really set your timer. I want you to set your timer for at least 10 to 15 minutes and think about what God says about self-confidence. And so, which brings me to, I want to share some scripture with you because that's where we find our answers. That's where we see how God is powerful and holy and we are less than, but he is enough. And we don't need self-confidence, ladies. We need God confidence. We need to be confident in God's word. We need to be confident and be enough with what his word is saying. And I'll just share with you really quickly this story that really captured my attention. And I'm so grateful that the Holy Spirit would just grab me away and say, hey, this is not where I want you to be walking down. I've already set a path for you. So the bottom line is that the story I wanted to share is that I was finding myself looking through these really old videos that I have on my computer. And the videos were uh, from a membership that I used to have years ago. I was a Christian still back then um, as I was a member of this one coaching program. And all these videos were all about how to, you know, do a specific move, how to, you know, be more engaging in your workout. And ultimately it, mentions like before your the workout program I want you to take a before picture and then at the end of two weeks and the end of four weeks at the end of six weeks keep doing these progress pictures and then see your progress and what I found was that I was getting sucked in slowly but surely getting sucked into my mindset of what my heart and my mind was like back then years ago I was so fixed on the physical I was so fixed on trying to do all these exercises so that I can look better. And I almost fell into the trap of being and finding satisfaction in the physical. Like if I can only lose 10 more pounds, then I would feel so much better about myself. And then what? I'm going to fish out compliments from other people. So that that's just a really quick story of an example of how we can really conform to the world. And that's why it's so important to make sure that what we are feasting our eyes on and what we are allowing to come through our social media feeds and what we're liking and things like that, or even what we're not liking is going to, to create this algorithm on your personalized feed because the internet, the web, they know exactly, it knows exactly what you're looking at and it will pull sources related to what you like or don't like. So if you're not liking any spiritual things, if you're not liking any Jesus things, if you're not liking any anything dealing with the Bible or scripture or anything like that, it's not really going to give you that. But if you're liking all these other posts of like fitness models and workouts and things like that, that's all you're going to see. So as you can imagine, if that's all you're going to see when you go in, your confidence is going to go down, obviously. You're going to feel so low about yourself. You're going to feel, I mean, the bottom line is everything is going to be fixed on yourself and how you can make yourself feel better. But God tells us to serve other people. Yes, it's okay to work out. Good. Take care of that. Steward your bodies. God has given us capable bodies and strong bodies and we're able to work out. Yes, do that. But when we're, our attention is full on, like full throttle on trying to make ourselves better and really spending and investing time and in ways of how to make our nutrition better, how to, how to work out seven days a week, how, you know, all these little tips and tricks. Gosh, ladies, that's where I was. I was so, what's the word? I was so wrapped up in the flesh and I still have my battles today. But when we believe the lies of the world, 
that tell us you need to be more self-confident if you want this to happen in your life, or you need to be self-confident and you need to build your confidence if you want this to happen in your life. Who is God? Who is God? The God of the universe, the God of the Bible. Who is he and what does he make happen? It's up to him, right? He is the one that exalts rulers and brings rulers down and lifts people up and brings people down. Like he is the creator of the galaxy. He is the one that paints the sky. So who's to say that he can't make things possible? And I just want to make sure that I'm not, I'm not talking about prosperity here. I'm not talking about, Hey, pray for something and hope that this and that happens. And then you're going to win a million dollars and whatever. No, I'm talking about the God of the universe and how he makes and allows things to fall into place. However, and according to what he wants to happen, he's going to allow that to happen. So it's not that you can't pray for certain things. Of course, pray, pray fervently, pray without ceasing and pray without any hesitation. But we need to be careful about what we pray for. So going back to the question, why do you seek self-confidence? I seriously want you to take some time, set your timer and write this down. Why do you seek self-confidence? Because I can almost guarantee you guys that when you spend time answering this question, you're going to answer yourself and you're probably even going to find yourself sounding kind of silly. Like, oh, okay, this has nothing to do with God. This has nothing to do with the value of my faith in Jesus. Trying to have self-confidence is whatever it is for you. Write it down. I want to bring you to verse 3 in Romans 12, which says, Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. So we need to measure ourselves by the faith that God has given us. Don't measure yourself compared to what someone else looks like or what someone else is, how their confidence or their boost in themselves are. That is not how we should be measuring ourselves. Not the measurement of the world, but by the Creator, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God the Father, the Trinity, the Messiah, Jesus. Let's measure ourselves according to the faith that God has given us. The next verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 to 13. Oh, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as the standard of measurement. How ignorant. Verse 13. We will not boast about things done outside our area of authority. We will boast only about what has happened within the boundaries of the work God has given us, which includes our working with you. So this is Paul writing to the church and the people in the church, they were saying, oh, just because he's not here and he's writing a letter, he sounds so forceful. But when he's in person, he actually is not going to be as forceful in how his speech and his language is. And Paul is saying, that's not how I'm going to compare myself to. I'm not going to compare myself to men and how they do things and how they, you know, say one thing and then mean another or they respond one way behind closed doors but when they're in person they respond in a different way and he's saying don't worry that's that's not how i'm coming across and paul's saying that is so ignorant he's saying in the nkg ver version he says for we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise we, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us. Yes, and amen. This is how we should be comparing ourselves to. We should be comparing ourselves and being within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us. So in other words, I would say like this probably can mean that it means stay in your lane. Right. Stay in your lane, the lane that God has put you on. Don't compare yourself to other people because self-confidence really is associated with comparison. Right. It goes hand in hand. If you want to be more self-confident then you heard someone else speak or you saw someone else's result and you want to have a similar or even better results or speak better than them or whatever the situation is. And you're comparing yourself to that. And now you want to be better than you are right now because 
you want to try to meet that person's standard. And I'm not saying that you should never strive to try to be better. Like the Bible doesn't ever say, hey, be less than, you know, don't ever work on this or work on that. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Like, yes, go ahead and do these things. But when we measure ourselves to other people and manly standards, that is not of God, right? That is a trap and a trick uh, from the devil, from Satan himself. He wants us to compare ourselves to other people, not to God. Anything dealing with God, Satan's like, nope, nope, go this way. That's not true. You don't need that. So going back to the question, why do you seek self-confidence? Think about who you are measuring yourself up against. And then the final verse is from Galatians chapter 6, verses 3 to 5. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. That is an instruction from God. He's saying pay careful attention to your own work, how you do it. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. I love that verse. It's such an, a good reminder for me, for you, for all of us. God is saying you need to pay attention to what you're doing, not what someone else is doing, because that's where you're going to get the satisfaction when you complete the job, when you did a job well done. And how can we do a job well done when we're looking at someone else? Right. And I know this kind of sounds like it's a comparison episode, but really it goes hand in hand. You cannot try to build self-confidence if you're not looking at someone else. And the bottom line is we are measuring ourselves to man, to people, to other ladies, to other people in our lives when we should be measuring our work and anything that we do to Christ. And that is the bottom line. If you are seeking self-confidence, if the world keeps repeating to you, have self-confidence. This is how to have self-confidence. You need self-confidence if you want to succeed. That is a bunch of baloney. We need to continue to walk down God's path. And there's nowhere in the Bible that says we need to be self-confident. We need to have self-confidence. And if anything, ladies, if we do have self-confidence, how is that shining the light on God? How is that drawing other people to Jesus. I think about all the people in my life where they're different shapes, body than me. And I'm like, wow, I want to look like that. Wow, I want to look like her. Wow, this person has a really different shape, body than me, but they're so confident. They're so, just so, they feel good about what they're wearing. And I want to carry myself that way. I want to be able to look that way and not worry about my cellulite in the back and all this and all that. But when I open scripture and the more I dive in and the more I dig into his word, the more his word washes my heart. And there becomes this filter on my lens, this biblical filter. And it reminds me of my noise canceling earbuds. The way it's designed is that it tunes everything out around, around me. Right, So that I'm only focused on hearing whatever is coming through my earbuds. And that reminds me of God's word in a sense. Because when I read his word and I go out into the world or I read something or I listen to something, he helps me to cancel out and to push out all the darkness and all the lies. And he helps me to focus on what his word, his truth, and how it satisfies this life and where I find my joy. That, that's what happens for me. God's word does that. So we need to be immersed in his word. I'm, I'm just never going to stop saying this because this is a reminder for me. Like I said, I almost got sucked in last week or was it two weeks ago? Like I found myself scrolling through these videos thinking about how I wanted to be like this fitness person. I want my body to look like hers, right? I want to, you know, she's so confident. She's so comfortable in her body and, you know, other people are going to compliment on her and I, why do I want that? How is that pushing people to Jesus? And that's always like the question that we should be asking ourselves is, whatever I'm doing, how is it pushing someone to Jesus? 
How is it introducing the gospel? How is it going to edify someone? How is it going to encourage them to see that God made them this way? Or am I doing something that is going to highlight flesh? And am I doing something and choosing and speaking in a certain way that's going to highlight anything that's not Jesus? You know what I'm saying? Like we, we need to remember these things that God tells us to be salt and he tells us to be light. So we cannot be light unless we're salt. He tells us in his word, first he tells us to be salt. So we need to watch how we speak and that it's not of the world, but that our speech is sober and the things that we think of. So let's be careful, be mindful of what we're watching and what we're listening to. And let's continue to walk on the path that God has for us. And that is not self-confidence. It is God confidence. It is confidence in Christ and who he made us to be. I'm really so grateful to be here and share this bonus with you ladies because I know that the world speaks death but God's word speaks life and I'm just so filled with joy to come on and share this with you because self-confidence is really a trap that we can fall into and what I want you to do ladies is if this is something that you know is going to bless another sister in Christ or it's going to bless someone else in your life whoever it is share God's word with them share this episode. And by the way, that's, if you haven't done that, if you haven't written a review on this podcast on iTunes, and if you have not shared this with someone, those are the two things that you can do right now. Pause this and go and do that. Write a review on iTunes and share this with someone, text message them. And by doing that, you're going to be entered into a drawing that I have. I'm going to give away a one hour, $97 coaching session to one person that God is already, God already knows who that is. So I don't know who it is, but God does. And I will be announcing the winner in my first episode in May. So ladies, I'm just going to be honest. There hasn't been anyone that left a review on my, on my podcast. I mean, you can see that it has been a while since anyone even wrote a review. So the chances that it's going to be you is highly likely. So go ahead and do that. Pause this. Ladies, that is what I do right now. This is where God has me to be a spiritual fitness coach and to really meet you where you are, whatever season you're at regarding fitness, regarding your body struggles, regarding food struggles. Why are you struggling with your body goals? Maybe you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And that's what we dive into in my coaching sessions, which $97 for one hour. But this is what God has really equipped me with to be able to share with other women who have been through the same things that I have been through and that I'm actually still going through. Believe it or not, I still struggle with these things, but I'm just two steps ahead of you. And I want to help you. What do you want to lose weight for? I want to talk about those things so you can actually answer the question yourself. And that's what I do. Spiritual fitness coach, if that's what you're looking for, email me. My email is down below, Jacqueline, J-A-C-L-Y-N at courageousfitfemale.com. That's it for now, ladies. Until the next episode, be sure to leave a review and to share this with one person and you will be entered into the one hour coaching. See you on the next episode, ladies. For his honor and for Jesus's glory, stay courageous and fit.